Hello everybody, welcome back. Another week, another jam. I almost didn't have one for you this week. I uh, was so consumed with building a computer and I had one all selected and picked out and ordered and I just couldn't bring myself to do it because it's just so expensive. And I have to get a new audio interface if I upgrade my computer because Firewire is just not common and my PCI card is dated and you have to use a Texas Instrument card for my interface. So I had a Focusrite Scarlet selected and kept it all at two grand and I just said I can't do it. And I started thinking about my channel and what I'm doing and if it's worth it and then just my channel in general, like what am I doing, you know? So I didn't even feel like doing any videos this week, but yesterday I was playing on the Pro 2 just for a few minutes playing in the polyphonic mode, or the paraphonic mode, and I had these squares and just the release, and it was so beautiful, and I had the sem filter, and I said, that sounds really nice, maybe I'll do something with that. So that's kind of why I'm doing this video. I am just gonna kind of start from scratch with that idea of just four oscillators set to square, and then the paraphonic mode with some release. I have the idea of maybe doing like a, a bucket brigade and then having the time change uh, to like eighth notes or fourths and trying to see where that goes kind of just so with a, you'll hear the sound and then it'll change its pitch on on time using a square LFO. So that's just an idea but I'm going to start with the squares and kind of make something magical. It was really fun in the sequencer. Oh my gosh that was cool. But uh, yeah, so that's why I figure maybe I'll do that and make a making music in the moment this week and see how this one goes. But I uh, hope you're all doing well and catch you out. Let's check it out. <laughs>
Alright, and so we begin. I figured out that I'm going to have to have uh, another interface with more inputs if I want to get a cleaner signal because driving it with this interface is a little too high or too hot. And my fan's going off. <laughs> Anyways, that'll be some thing I'll think about. So I was thinking about how can I do it to be clean where I don't have to drive it so much and I think recording the mic directly into where I'm recording the audio through a separate channel would be better. So okay, let's uh, get into this.
So I I had a, a pad going with chords and it sounded okay, but I didn't know um, how I want to start the song. So I turned the attack down and then I got this sound right here. And I thought, that's pretty cool. I'll sequence that. So okay, so I have this, and now the question is, do I just start the song with this? I'm thinking of this with kind of a weird pad, kind of a prior virus like moving pad, or do I kind of start with a normal song and then it goes into this weirdness? Um, I kind of want to start with the pad now and see where that goes.
All right, so we have this weird little thing going on. So I'm thinking I will either put supporting pads to give more um, harmonic texture, I suppose, or I might use a sequencer with the same Pro 2. So the either the pads or the sequencer will be from the Pro 2 for this next part.
So basically I didn't like how the sequencer that came in was mono and the other sound is mono. I, I like it in the beginning as mono, but I don't want it to be layered like that. So that's why I separate it. I created an effects channel so that the delay is going throughout the entire spectrum. I didn't want to have the delay being shifted with the auto pan. And now I'm thinking I probably could have just put it after the auto pan and the inserts, but whatever. This is fine. And um, I, it sounds what I wanted it to be, so that's good. And then we'll probably get into something a bit more fun after this. Well, this is fun, but you know, we'll get some groove going here. Oh, and what I forgot to do is I could have just done everything on one channel and then duplicated instead of doing it and then copying it. So what I'm doing here is I just shifted everything a whole bar because I kind of want to have the thing start at 33 because later on in the track it can sometimes get confusing on where I have things lined up. So this is a great simple catching it early to do this and uh, now I can start whatever I want at 33 like normal because I'm going to have this break here. So it's going to go like this and then you'll have that space and then something's gonna come in. Um, I like the melody. I wanna keep that melody, but not so trippy and um, see where it goes. I love the squares, how that's sounding. I like that, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll start with, let me play around with the pulse and see what, what to do.
So playing with the MIDI, it's like layering it and making it sound weird, like a duplicating. So I couldn't really hear, and then I, I just said, well, I know how it sounds, so I played it, and then it came out kind of cool. I like that little blip there. So I'm going to record this and get some chords and move on. So what I did there is I took the same patch, but I put a high pass fully engaged and put the the pitch modulation on the pitch the mod wheel all the ways up. And then I have that bucket brigade from the previous patch to have the timing go weird and I kind of like that. I think that gives it some nice character. So what I'm going to do here is I know that this delay is very strange and it does what it wants because it's just modulating the time without any sort of consistency. So I'm going to pan this to the left, I'm going to do another take, pan that to the right, we'll see how that turns out.
Now you tell me why adjusting the filter affects the delay time. That's the virus for you.
So I didn't really know how to add to it. I wanted to add like maybe a third oscillator, so I reached for the sub oscillator because it was the last second I was like, okay, well maybe I'll just do that. And I grabbed the FM knob on accident. So I don't know, I'm gonna try to work with this. Sometimes the mishaps make the song, you know?
So what I'm going to do is get some drums here going on and get a bass. I don't think I'm going to keep exactly these pads in this lead, but I'm going to layer with the drums so I can get an idea of the bass.
All right, I got the drums to somewhat okay. Hope uh, it's not too loud on this. Ah, you can hear, <laughs> you can see it uh, got much louder. I'm gonna just turn this down right there, and then I'm gonna add in a bass.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this lead, and then I'm going to go into a new base and kind of a new, maybe a new scale, I don't know, just kind of switch it up, get some cool rhythm going. So I'm going to have this, I like the end of that lead, so I'm going to kind of continue that and kind of just build it up a little.
So alright, I think we're making full circle here, so I should be able to wrap this up soon.